today we're going to look at a pasture here. This again, this is high phase two. There's some orchard grass heading here, but there's about five different species of grass out here. Orchard grass is the earliest. This was actually about 14 to 15 inches tall. I estimated there was 3,400 pounds of dry matter forage out here. That's about uh, 60 stock days per acre of grazing out there in a take half, leave half situation. So that's kind of what we're looking at there. We're going to go and graze that now. And we, ha we have the decision to make of how short do we want to graze it. This figure here goes back to some work we did at Missouri where we, had, we grazed either two, four, six, eight inch residual height. This is the daily growth rate in pounds per acre per day. And it's to go from the target residual to grow one ton more feed in that pasture. So this is going to be how many days it'll take us to get there. You'll notice that if we leave four inches and really anything up to about eight inches, it regrows pretty well. Yeah, it grows a little faster at six inches, but really anything in that four to eight inch residual range, so from about there to there, grows back about the same. But when we bite it shorter than four inches, each additional bite we take off really slows the recovery rate. And this is the pasture we were working with, real similar to southern Iowa pastures. This is the after it's been grazed. That's a four to five inch residual. The animals were on there for 24 hours. This is what's left behind. That's a whole lot of leaf area. That's a lot of opportunity to capture solar energy and get this pasture growing back quickly again. And that's what we want it to do. In this case, at four inches, time to grow one ton is 40 days. 50 pounds per acre per day times 40 days gives us a ton of feed. So here we are. We've gone out to the pasture. We went out there thinking, oh, I'm going to move the cows today. But you look at this and you see all this green grass left behind and you got that question. Do I leave them there and not waste grass or do I move them? What are you going to do? See, 10 years ago, everybody would have said, well, that's wasting grass. And they're going to want to stay here and use that because in this country we have a great fear of wasting grass. If you're ready to increase productivity of your pastures, to build better soil, to make your animals productive, I will have no fear of wasting grass. There is no such thing as wasted grass. The first thing that you have to understand about being in the pasture business is grass feeds grass. The second thing you need to understand is grass feeds the soil. And then we can think about the grass feeds the livestock. If your approach to pasture and your cows has always been, got to feed the cows, got to feed the cows, got to feed the cows, you just use your grass up feeding cows. And when it gets a little dry spell, you think you have a drought. I thought it was great what you said this morning about 2012. Basically, what drought? When you leave as much grass as Dan leaves behind after he grazes a pasture, you leave the soil protected, it's cooler, water's not evaporating out of it, the plants have a chance to grow back, you can build organic matter. You can build water reserve into the soil. As you build organic matter in the soil, you build infiltration capacity, water storage capacity, and you can weather the drought's far better than the person who has grazed it short. The person who is afraid of wasting grass in, ahead of a drought is going to be the one victimized by the drought. If you grass feeds grass, grass feeds the soil, it'll take care of the livestock. Right. I will have no fear of wasting grass because you've got to take care of the grass and the soil first. So we're going to move them. Now there's been plenty of times when guys said, well that's better grass than I put my cows in on, and that's when I say, aha, you just answered your own question. So if we leave them there and ask them to take more, this is where we end up, at the one to three inches. And the way I created these two areas, um, I just, for this day, it was the next day, I just shrank the area I gave them by one-third. 
and this was in, they still stayed out there 24 hours, and by shrinking the area by one-third, I took it down to this level here. You don't see as much leaf area. There's more sunshine going down to the ground layer. What does that mean in terms of recovery? Taking it down to two inches, 64 days to grow a ton of feed. In a 200-day growing season, if it takes you 64 days to grow a ton of feed, you're going to grow three tons of feed. If you can grow a ton of feed in 40 days because you've left a better solar panel, you'll return five cycles, grow five tons of feed. You know what? That's a pretty big difference. That's about a 60% increase in production because we simply made a decision that we would leave more grass out there, that we would waste grass. We decided we would waste grass and we got 60% more. This happens all over the world every day when someone takes the step to recovery. It's profound. What's, uh, like, I don't know if any land has sold over in your neighborhood lately, Dan, but what would an acre of that pasture ground like you have sell for? $2,500, $3,000. And so if you bought another acre for every acre that you had, you could double the capacity of your farm, right? And it would cost you $2,500 to $3,000 an acre to do it. Or you could change the way that you graze what you already have. Now, it's probably going to take an investment in stock water development, some fencing to do that. You're going to go out and move the cattle on a regular basis. What do you suppose a reasonable dollar amount for taking 800 acres and putting good quality water system and subdivision fence on it might be? 100 to 150 dollars an acre. I was willing to go ahead and say 200. At 200 bucks an acre invested in fence and water, that is less than 10% of buying an acre of land. You can increase productivity by 60%. In many cases, we see it double. That's what investing in the infrastructure to more effectively manage your own land can do. You don't have to go out and pay $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 an acre to get another acre of pasture. You can create another acre of pasture on your own place just by managing it. Again, looking across the fence at the neighbor's pasture, middle of the summer, you ever see pasture that looks like this? Short gray spots, tall bunchy clumps. What we have going on here, all that short gray stuff is phase one. The animals graze that first in the season. It tries to regrow a little bit. They bite it off again because it's the best tasting stuff out there. We have these clumps out here that they're not eating. It might be a different species or it might just be plants that didn't get grazed early and they're too mature for them to want to eat. That's phase three. If we look straight down in here, I'll guarantee you we're going to see some bare ground. So there we are, heart of the growing season, plenty of sunshine, and we have the three components that don't make a good solar panel. Where is phase two? Phase two is the objective in our pasture. So I'm going to um, look at it in different plant communities. You see some switchgrass and blue stem there, so we're in some native tall grass prairie. The top side of phase two might be at 24, 30 inches or more. Bottom side is going to be at 8 to 12 inches. It's still a matter of how many leaves are out there. In the prairie grasses, the leaves are just farther apart on the stem. But you're still going to be going from about that to begin phase two, about three leaves, and the top side of phase two is going to be five or six leaves. It's still based on that number of leaves. They're just distributed differently in a prairie. Our uh, things like orchard grass, brome, fescues, top side's going to be about 14, 15 inches. Bottom side's going to be four or five inches. Then we get into fine grasses like bluegrass and ryegrass. That stuff might never need to get above six or seven, if, if it has water. If it has ample water, bluegrass will probably never get over, never needs to get over six or seven inches, graze it down to two. If it has plenty of water, bluegrass white clover just working in that zone there, 180 day growing season, you can produce six tons an acre on bluegrass if you just work it in that zone. The problem is, unless you're irrigating, you don't have that water availability. 
necessary to make it produce like that. I never had any respect for bluegrass until I went to irrigated country. And when you put eight-tenths of an inch of water on it every three days, you just say, holy cow, that's bluegrass? Because it'll produce. Key thing is we don't want to graze it back into phase one. Because every time we knock it back into phase one, it takes that extra two to three weeks to come back up to the point of effectively capturing solar energy. Have you been to very many grazing meetings? You have seen this picture, or one very similar. Usually it's this picture. And the presenter says, okay, here's continuously grazed pasture. There's no roots under it, because if you keep it short up here, it can't grow roots down here. Carbon is the only element of growth that comes into the top of the plant. Everything else, water, nitrogen, magnesium, calcium, phosphorus, sulfur, comes in through the bottom. We don't want to do this. Oh, look at this ungrazed plant. Look at that massive root system. It's healthy, vigorous, and all those things. And then they move on to the next slide. To me, the most interesting plants in this picture are the two in the middle. So I went back, found the original research to see what they had done. This is a grazing, simulated grazing study. These two are simulating rotational grazing. Take half, leave half. Take two-thirds, leave a third. This is the fear of wasting grass. This is leaving down there the extra day to take that other bite. And look at the difference in the root system. Tremendous. Which is going to produce more? Probably that one. Okay? Let's put this in the context of my tax dollars at work. I pay taxes. USDA sends it down the pipe. It gets allocated out to one of your neighbors as an equip project. NRCS designs them a pipeline system, stock tanks, subdivision fencing. They're excited, enthusiastic, and they put it in place. And they go out there every day and they rotate cattle. And they go from this here to right there. They get a you know conservationist of the year award because, wow, look at this. They really changed their production, increased their carrying capacity by 20%. They have more ground cover, all of those things. Let's give them an award. That was my tax dollars that paid for that to happen. I want this to be the product of my tax dollars. You can make exactly the same investment in the stock water system, in the fence, in interseeding, in fertilizing, even going out there every day and moving the cattle. But if you go in with the wrong management criteria, you get this, which is way better than this, but it isn't anywhere near what the potential would be. I will have no fear of wasting grass. Now we're back to 1955. That other one was 61. Another one of those classic studies. Let the plants grow to a certain point, remove 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way up to 90% of the leaf area. These numbers in here are the percent of roots not growing seven days after the harvest event. Another one of the foundation studies for take half, leave half grazing management. Basically, it shows you can go up to 50% utilization, have minimal effect on the dynamics of the root system, take one bite beyond 50, and boom, you set the roots back at least for a week in this case. On these ones down here, it's for 10 weeks before they come back to productivity. Now, we'll say, oh, but it's it's... The pulsing of roots, the living and dying of roots that creates organic matter in the soil. So it's a wonderful thing that we knock those roots off and kill them. Yeah, let's knock them off and kill them. But in three days, let's have new roots growing back again and let's be active. Again, your choice of how short you take it is going to affect the root system. And the more times that you can pulse root systems Knock some roots off, but grow some more. Come back in 40 days rather than 64 days. Knock them off again. Grow some more. We will shed more biomass to become organic matter in a pulsing, repeated measure rather than one or two severe removals of roots. Phase, uh, picture probably doesn't show real well, but there's the phase two residual. There's the phase one. I think you can see a bit of difference. In my view of the world, Grazing too short, too many times, too frequently is the biggest cause of lost pasture production that there is. Not that you quit using nitrogen fertilizer, not that you didn't plant a wonder grass from New Zealand, simply biting too short, 
too many times.